Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Um, like John and like all of you in this room, I too love Cincinnati, and that's one of the reasons why all of us are committed to making sure that this is a great neighborhood and great city for all people to live, work, and play in. Let me just tell you a little bit about my background and then talk about why I am running for mayor. Some of you in this room I've known for a long time, but some of you are new friends, and so it probably would be helpful. I grew up in Northern Kentucky, and the only thing I remember from growing up is that the one thing that I had set as a goal in life was that I was going to move across the river and live in the city of Cincinnati. <laughs> um, and that is because I have always felt so strongly about Cincinnati as a great city and a place of opportunity for everybody, and when I was a kid, for myself, quite frankly. And I chose to start my career in Cincinnati working in communities and with neighborhood groups. I started out working with women and children who were victims of sexual assault and domestic violence, and later worked with communities and neighborhood leaders, Carl Marjorie, I have to point you out, such as Carl and Marjorie Effort, when um, Pleasant Ridge, taking the leadership, worked with Bond Hill and Roselawn and a number of other communities to clean up the Clifton Davis chemical site. And as a result of our efforts in coalition with many other neighborhoods throughout the city of Cincinnati, we actually made a big difference. We adopted Title 10, local enforcement for the uh, air code, and we also established the Office of Environmental Management. Both actions were critically important as we were working in the 1980s and 1990s to make sure that neighborhoods could be safe from exposure to toxic pollution and hazardous waste. And actually it was that work in communities that caused me first to choose to enter into public service. It was really clear to me, after having spent many, many, many afternoons in front of city council committees, that probably the best place that I could make a difference in the lives of people with whom I was working and about whom I cared was to actually be an elected member of council to have the ability to affect legislation and to make, provide policy direction to the city administration that really had to work as a partner with neighborhoods who were trying to address issues of safety and health in their communities. And I'm very pleased that for the eight years that I did serve on council and the six years of which I was mayor, that I spent a lot of time working with neighborhoods as we sought to clean up not just pollution but the, uh, from toxics and hazardous waste, but the pollution from blight and abandonment and very proud of the Zero Tolerance Initiative that I put in place at the time. Very proud of the partnership I formed with the private sector that brought to us the longest running city center, center city home show in the country, City Rama, that many of you may know about. Very proud of the partnership with the Board of Realtors to sell Cincinnati through the Ambassador Program. And very proud of the partnership with the business community when we worked to seize the opportunity to actually lay the foundation for what we now celebrate as the banks in Smale Riverfront Park, and where we turned what was going to be a simple road paving project into the total transformation of Fort Washington Way. We also drew a line in the sand. 1990s was the time when downtown was beginning to decline, and we decided we had to begin to invest, and so we said we are going to build a performing arts center downtown, and we did it, and it was the beginning of the turnaround. The interesting thing about those stories of performing art centers and laying the foundation for the banks when it was simply a railroad siding and a mud pit is that many people thought that those were bad ideas. They thought that the banks will never happen. Why are we spending that money? Why are we building the Aronoff Center? And so when I hear people talk about good ideas versus bad ideas, I have the experience to know the difference between the two, and that's why the streetcar is a very, very good idea. And why the parking deal, which I will be happy to answer all your questions about, is also a very good idea in terms of leveraging the city asset so we can invest in growth and development. Well, now I'm running again, and so why am I running for mayor of the city of Cincinnati? I'm running because 
of the young woman that I met on an elevator when I happened to be going to an appointment in a downtown office building and she got on the elevator, she looked at me, it was clear she recognized me and she said to me, my mother voted for you. Um, <laughs> Fortunately, she didn't say her grandmother. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she said, my mother voted for you. I said, that's great. She said, I just came back from Chicago. I said, that's wonderful. I hope you like to say. She said, the reason I came back is because of all the work that you did when you were mayor. Because my mother told me about what we did, what you did, and what others did to make this city what it is today. And so I'm running because I have a bold vision for this city, which is a city that is growing, with a vital city center surrounded by thriving neighborhoods, a place where our children and their children want to stay, and other people's children want to come because it has a strong economy, it has great neighborhoods, it has an inclusive community, it has great schools, and it also has responsible leadership. And so when we think about a strong economy, I'm very proud of the fact that I participated in the formation of Go Cincinnati, the city's economic development plan, which is resulting in investment in six key areas of the city based upon the revenues that we are going to get back so we can support services and expand our investments in neighborhoods. And we are seeing results in the last two years alone Actually, from 2008 to 2010, we have seen a growth in 7,000 jobs either retained or created, according to the city's former economic development department. We are investing in growth and development and are beginning to see revenues in the city increase as a result of our strategy of bringing businesses and jobs into the city and into our neighborhoods so that people have opportunity. But we have to do more. That's one of the reasons why I do support the parking deal. As we leverage an underutilized, undermanaged asset, modernize it, bring it into the 21st century, but also generate a revenue stream and generate the resources with which we can do further investment in places like the I-71 Martin Luther King Interchange, which we know will develop 7,000 new permanent jobs as a result of that investment. But also what we know is that once we do that, the city is going to have to partner with UC and Children's Hospital and take advantage of all the research that is coming out of those institutions and help them put on the ground at Reading and Martin Luther King a research park which will stimulate not just the further commercialization of research coming out of the uptown area, but stimulate the further growth and development in Avondale, in Coryville, in Clifton, in Mount Auburn, and Clifton University Heights. Not a pipe dream. It's already in the planning stages. It's already under discussion. Great neighborhoods. I spent the last six years working in neighborhoods to give them the tools and resources to make sure that they can turn their dreams and visions into concrete reality. And we are making a difference. Evanston is implementing its housing strategy in partnership with the Port Authority. Walnut Hills, College Hill, Westwood, East Price Hill, the list goes on and on. This is not an issue of downtown versus the neighborhoods or the city investing only in over the Rhine and neglecting the neighborhoods. That is the rhetoric of the past. We have to go forward as a community, and I am very proud to be part of a council that created the Innovative Focus 52 Fund to leverage city dollars so that neighborhoods can actually benefit from transformative investments such as the Jordan Crossing in Bond Hill, which we will see as a mixed-use commercial retail development. And when we look at a conclusion, as we look at the future and understand that all members of our community have to participate in the prosperity and opportunities created, what we have to do is make sure that the city sets the standard. And so I'm very proud that I authored a motion, which was passed, to make sure that we do a disparity study so that we can level the playing field for minority and women in businesses. But we have to do more. We have to make sure that we use our leverage to encourage those people with whom we are partnering with significant public investment to make sure they also are living up to our expectations so that people who are working and participating in the jobs that are being created look like all the members of our community. Schools, 
The mayor of the city of Cincinnati does not control the public school system, and I do not pretend that we do. But what I do know is that we have to be partners. We have to be partners because we both have a vested interest in the success of our children. And so that means further investments in school-based health clinics. It means continuing to work with the schools to make sure children are ready to learn by supporting the preschool promise. And it also means doing what we do best as a health department, protecting children so that they can learn and not be impacted by the effects of lead. And finally, I'm going to talk, oh, he's saying, no, no, I'm, finally, I'm going to talk about pension and responsible government. You need to know that this city council, under my leadership, passed the most sweeping pension reforms of any public pension system when it comes to current and future retirees. We did our job. The problem now, so we solved the problem going forward. The problem is not going forward, the problem is the unfunded liability. And we know what the experts tell us is the solution. It's not a mystery. Change the 3% compounding COLA to a simple COLA indexed to inflation and capped. Increase the city's contribution from what will be 24% of payroll to 29%. And if you look at actual projections, it will solve the problem. In terms of a balanced budget, we have all balanced the budget. The problem is the structural imbalance. And so that means looking at shared services, it means improving efficiencies, and it will mean also looking at areas in which we will have to cut back. I thank you for your time. I look forward to questions and answers.